Happy Thursday, my friends. If you depend on SNAP food benefits to keep food on the table for your household, the most pressing question on your mind is probably how much you will receive this year. You might also be concerned about how much the government's budget negotiations could impact you. The good news is that SNAP funding is mandatory. Lawmakers in Congress can't just take it away. However, the negotiations have already impacted SNAP eligibility for some people. Moreover, if the government shuts down because the politicians can't reach an agreement on spending, it could mean delays to your payments. Let's dive into the three key changes to watch out for in 2024. The first change to watch out for is your SNAP benefit amount. SNAP benefits get adjusted each fiscal year to account for changes in living costs. The fiscal year starts in October, so you will already be receiving the increased benefit amount for 2024. Watch out for an announcement in August from the USDA setting out how much benefits might increase for 2025. The new amount will come into effect on October 1st, 2024. For the 2024 fiscal year, these are the maximum benefits in most states. Now, if you are hoping to receive extra money in 2024, you will have to wait until October to see any changes in your benefits. Look for ways to stretch your SNAP payments a little further, such as maximizing coupons and cashback apps to get extra discounts. It is also worth seeing if your state has a Double Up Food Bucks program, as these can get you two for one on fresh produce at participating stores. If you have school age kids, you might be able to get some extra assistance during the summer holidays. The USDA recently announced that 21 million children will benefit from its new permanent summer EBT program. Families in the 35 states that will participate can receive up to $40 per child to help them buy groceries while school is out. The second change to watch out for this year are SNAP eligibility requirements. Eligibility for SNAP largely depends on the assets you hold in your bank account, your income, and your work situation unless one of your household members is disabled or over 60. The maximum amount you can hold in your account is $2,750, and this is unchanged from last year. In terms of income, SNAP assessors will look at your gross monthly income, which is the amount you receive before taxes are taken out, and your net income, which is what you actually take home. Both are calculated based on the U.S. poverty line. For the 2024 fiscal year, here are the maximum amounts households can earn each month and still be eligible. The biggest change to SNAP eligibility in 2024 is the age threshold for work requirements. In addition to the standard work requirements, there is something called an able-bodied adult without dependents work requirement. Essentially, if you're an able-bodied adult with no dependents and you aren't working or volunteering 80 hours a month, you can only claim three months of SNAP benefits in a three-year period. The able-bodied adults without dependent working requirements used to only apply to people between the ages of 18 and 50. Last year's Fiscal Responsibility Act increased the upper age limit to 52 in October 2023 and 54 in 2024. Many states waived work requirements during the pandemic, but the new legislation has also made that harder to do. The Center for Budget and Policy Priorities estimates around 750,000 older adults will be impacted by the new age requirements. If you're one of them, try not to let the red tape stop you from getting your food benefits. 
One study showed that work requirements can impact SNAP participation, even though they're not effective in getting people to work more. Try to understand what counts as work and what types of unpaid work might make up your hours. There may be a lot of red tape involved, especially as the policy is confusing and poorly implemented. Persevere. If you are a one- or two-person household, the maximum benefit you could be receiving is $535. That could make a big difference to your bottom line. Go to benefits.gov to see if you qualify for any other benefits. The requirements differ on other programs, so you might be able to get health or even utility bill assistance. Talk to hunger NGOs or call United Way at 211 to see what food pantries or soup kitchens are in operation near you. And last but finally not least, we have our third and final change. Expect more delivery services to accept SNAP payments. Grocery delivery services can give people access to lower cost stores, bulk purchases, and special offers. Earlier this year, Uber Eats said it would start accepting SNAP payments in 2024. It joins Instacart, Amazon, and Walmart, which already accept EBT payments. This is a trend that is almost certain to grow in 2024. Delivery services can offer convenience and value, and it's great that SNAP participants can access them. However, make sure you understand the fees involved and compare prices to see if you're getting the best deal. For example, I recently compared Instacart prices of a few items at Target against buying them directly from the website. The Instacart shop was almost 20% more expensive. October, the start of a new fiscal year, is when SNAP benefits change according to the cost of living. As such, SNAP participants will already be receiving the increased 2024 amount. Coupons, cashback apps, and double-up deals can all help stretch your SNAP dollars a little further. If you don't have enough money to buy food, see if local food pantries or soup kitchens could help. All right, folks, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like. Comment down below any information that you might have regarding helpful tips and money-saving strategies for those of you on low-income programs, Social Security, SNAP, and EBT benefits. And maybe you can help someone else out. I will see you all in the next video and have an awesome day.